that we eloped uh, at Gantham Point. It was an absolute beautiful day. I'll insert the little video here. We, we eloped, so it was just the two of us and Kobe. Uh, Kobe is my son. He's now back on the Gold Coast with his mum. Uh, so it was, we were pretty lucky. He came with us for the first six weeks and then a few days after the wedding I flew him home. That was always arranged. We're now doing 10 weeks without him and then we get him back again. Uh, a honeymoon period? Yeah. The wedding was nice so again the point we... Dish, yeah. yeah, we ditched the caravan for two nights. So we actually stayed at the Pearl um, at Cable Beach and it was beautiful. We had a really nice villa there with a pool um, and we had a private chef come in and we just had the full lux experience after living in a van for three years, so... Yeah, it was good. Nice to be waited on in your own own villa by your swimming pool. And yeah, it was nice. It was, uh, it was a really good way of doing it. Everyone we've spoken to has said, oh, ten times. Best way to do it ever. Chris actually proposed with a Pasquale Pearl. So that was sort of the reason that we picked Broome. It was like draw card, like I knew we were coming to Broome, so I proposed 18 months ago and we got married two weeks ago. Uh -huh. I haven't looked back since. <laughs> anyway, enough of that rubbish. We are... But the first part of our honeymoon, we went to Horizontal Falls. Oh yeah, we went to Horizontal Falls. You forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, how could I forget? That was an unreal experience. So, we did the overnight tour. You can only go through the big passage now. A uh, small passage closed two years ago. But the big passage is closing in 2028. Yeah. So yeah, the lease runs out in 2028 and they're not renewing the lease. So, after 2028 you'll be able to still go there, jump in the boat, and the boat will just hover nose up to the yeah nose up to the passage the white passage but yeah you won't be able to go through it so after the boat tour you jump back on the houseboat and you got to swim with the tawny, tawny nose. nose sharks that was the coolest experience you're in like a little sharp oh well a little paddock i guess in the water you're in a little cage pen in the water and you stand on the edge of the cage and the sharks are on the other side of the cage and they're, they're you know, free, that's where they swim. Uh, they're not caged or trapped or anything, uh, but they just call the sharks by tapping the side of the cage and they come up and then they just throw little bits of barramundi at the edge of the cage where you're standing and the sharks just, they all just go for it right in front of you. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. And they're black. That was probably the coolest experience I've ever done. They were so cute. They had these little sharp fangs. They looked like vampires. Oh, yeah, that was the best part of the trip. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty cool. Other than the horizontal walls, of course, the reason that we didn't go. After that, we they did a cheese platter on the deck, so you've got to watch the sunset over the water. And then we had a barramundi feed for dinner, and you got to sit with everyone. Yeah, you got to BYO your own drinks, so any alcohol you've got to take up yourself. Uh, and they, they chill it, cool it for you, and then serve it to you. So we were allowed five kilos each to take up. So that included clothes, toiletry, swimmers, and your own alcohol. And a towel. And a towel. After our little overnight getaway, we headed to Kwondong Point, a free camp that is 45 kilometers just outside of Broome. The first 25 kilometers up the Cable of Egg Road is bitumen, but the turn off from Kwondong is dirt all the way with some boggy soft sand areas. It truly is a bush camp. There is no facilities out there, so make sure you bring your own everything. 
So the views at this place are something else I can tell you. The tides obviously in Broome move quite a lot. I think seven, eight meters, six meters, it varies. So with the big tides, when high tide just brings in all that beautiful blue water, and then when the tide's out, it just reveals all this rocky, sandy beach. Uh, we found ourselves most afternoon with low tide out wandering around through all the rocks and hunting for pearl shells, what we thought was pearl shells, <laughs> or what we thought could have been pearl shells. We are site C6, so these are just some other sites plotted around up here, but they, the sites all line the cliff face going around the bay. So C6 is this one, very easy to get into. Just roll around there and then back the van up. Super simple. Each campsite has its own fire pit. I might have modified that one a little bit, but pretty cool. I've been sitting out here every arvo checking that view. Tide in and out, tide's out at the moment, so you can see how far it comes up when it comes in. Trusty old Starlink, it's been really good. And water hookup. The pipe actually goes straight through the site, uh, which is Annoying but kind of good because the pipe lays in the sun it means in the afternoon the water's really warm You don't even need to turn your hot water on You see C7 down there You go straight down there actually you can go for a dip It's nice down there, but we've been swimming over this side the whole time On top of the usual fishing, swimming, drinking routine, there are some other things you can actually check out around the camp. One of them being the rock pool. You can only access this by low tide? Yeah, low tide. So from from our campsite, they give you a mud map when you get there and it's on the mud map, but there's a bit of a rocky headland you can see from the camps and you just got to wander over there and then uh, and then go for about an 800 metre walk down that way. trip to Middle Lagoon during our Pender Bay stay. There is actually no dump point at Pender Bay itself, but there is one at Middle Lagoon. For a day visit into Middle Lagoon, it is $20 per vehicle. However, you can also camp there if you're not camping at Pender Bay. Don't leave home without any fuses. 
So for those who don't know, Barista Bar is a mechanic. And what do you tell all your customers to bring on a trip? Well, it's always handy to have a spare couple of fuses and things like that. Guess who didn't bring any fuses at all? This guy! <laughs> so oh, we were just airing up. So mum ties up after doing Dampier Peninsula, uh, Middle Lagoon and Pender Bay. So 32 degrees outside and I had eight tyres to pump up. I was on tyre five and the compressor blew a fuse. Meanwhile, I was collecting firewood with a hand saw because we don't have a chainsaw. No, something else I left home without. No, we, we chose to not bring a chainsaw which I regret and I have ordered one to pick up in Port Hedland. Very <laughs> <laughs> funny. We're heading to Sydney Bay now. We're here for four nights. It cost us $63 per night for power and water hookup. From Broome, it takes you about two and a half hours. Yeah, it's all uh, bitumen all the way now too, so two-wheel drive cars are fine. Signa Bay has lots to do in the sense of they're all tours. So there's farm tours, there's pearl grading, heaps of stuff. There's tours out on the water, there's tours with traditional owners, there's... Fishing tours. Yeah. But it all comes at a price. Yeah, everything costs, obviously. We did the cheapest tour today, that cost us $37 and that was the Pearl Farm Tour and that was land based. Yeah, an hour. It went a little bit more in an hour but they, yeah, they, they just, it's cool they explain a bit of heritage and everything about the farm and how it all began and they take you and show you essentially an oyster and, and they open it up and see if there's a pearl in there and yeah show you how they farm them and, and we found a pearl today which is pretty cool yeah you're wanting to come here on a weekend trip with your partner and you're wanting to do all the experiences and stay in a lovely villa and enjoy the restaurant with beautiful views and a nice pool we 100% recommend coming here yeah it's, it's got its own purpose I guess it's yeah but for us as caravanners we probably would not be back in a caravan yeah it's more of like a romantic getaway isn't it that's not it you know, <laughs> that's not us we're not yeah. romantic getaway getaway as we do this as a lifestyle choice yeah on a budget too you know we're, we're not here to do all the tours you could spend a thousand dollars on doing different tours over a few days easy there is one tour that we would probably spend the coin doing and that is the ocean waterfall tour it's that low tide the water falls off the reef uh, it's quite specky but it only happens on certain tides and you need those tides obviously to be in daylight hours and none of it lines up when we're here so we're gonna miss that one that's it for Signet Bay guys thanks for tuning in uh, before I go I just want to leave a hot little tip that I do that I find has helped us before we go and, and along the way quite regularly on the gib nearly daily i was checking all the suspension bolts and wheel nuts before we'd leave most of the time just visual but every couple of hundred k's i have been throwing a spanner over it uh but daily yeah just just a visual inspection under the car just to have a look make sure nothing's moved nothing's come loose so wheel nuts u-bolts leaf spring bolts and shocky mount bolts make sure the coils are sitting in there right uh things like that sway bars connected this that's just a few little things that i do to to help us touch wood we haven't had any dramas yet so whether that's because we've been checking it or we've been lucky we don't know but it's always good to check it make sure everything's good before you travel uh, that's it for the episode two guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are gonna start tracking south. So 
we'll see you on the road.